There was a time, I'd say the 90s, Jim Lee took over the X-Men line doing the art, and it was the pinnacle. It was peak X-Men, in my opinion. The X-Men ruled the 90s. They had video games. Was it X-Men on Sega? X-Men on the Super NES, the arcades, Children of the Atom, X-Men Clone Wars. Oh, man, dude. It was f***ing legit. That was a pretty badass time, honestly. And I still have fond memories of the X-Men to this day. I still collect some X-Men stuff, comics. Uh, X-Force mainly because they still kick ass. Nothing too new because you get stuff like this. X-Men Children of the Atom. Now, when you think of that, your first thought is, oh, Capcom. 2D fighter that led to X-Men versus Street Fighter, then Marvel versus Capcom, Marvel versus Capcom 2, 3, mm, but that was peak X-Men. Now we get this. The funny thing is, like, this is some weird ass interpretation of x-men where all the characters are like what if the x-men had sidekicks why would they have sidekicks the x-men already had the charles xavier school for the gifted then i think cyclops took over do they have genova at one point now wolverine ran the school but then wolverine died but wolverine's back from the dead there's too much lore here basically new marvel is just bankrupt for ideas it truly is. If they aren't rehashing something or gender swapping characters, or in the case of the Incredible Hulk, who is dead, by the way, Bruce Banner's dead. They killed him. Hawkeye killed him. Not even going to go into why Hawkeye killing him makes no sense. Nobody's got an hour to kill on that. But uh, Marvel Comics reveals K Immortal Hulk character is transgendered. Well, there you go. Huh? Social justice, I hate to say it, but it kind of is. It's like we're now shoehorning all this stuff into comics. And it's slightly strange to me. As my godmother Ghost once said, who happened to be transgendered, when they turned Iceman gay, Ghost was like, why are they taking established characters and turning them into something else to spin a narrative? I don't need that. If you want representation, give me new characters. That's why I don't really fault the new warriors. Like, at least Marvel will create trash characters to live out trash storylines rather than destroying people I know and love. Whatever. Let's watch this Children of the Atom trailer. I'm all over the place. There's so many things. All right, we already started off, and it's a bunch of characters that look like ripoffs of original X-Men characters. I could tease about Children of the Atom, but I will say one thing, and that's new characters. How is it new characters if you've got like a bargain bin archangel back there? You got a female version of Cyclops. You've got a black chick Gambit. We got a new Nightcrawler and what seems to be a male version of Jean Grey. How is this new? Where is the new? New would mean a whole different group of motherfuckers with their own identity. Or their own gimmick, you know? Like when Macho Man Randy Savage died, you didn't see Macho Man Jr. running around in the WWF. Oh, yeah! I'm ready for the role, Vince. X-Men is supposed to be something that is, you know, important to the now. And so what is more now than Zoomers? <laughs> oh, what is more now than Zoomers? Wasn't that cool and funny? I don't know about you, but I got douche chills so bad I could feel them riding up my asshole. Honestly, the, the X-Men were Stan Lee's way of trying to talk about segregation and bigotry the best way he could. The X-Men were sort of like, is the term a foil for that? That way he could tell the story of the struggles these people face simply because of how they were born. That was the point of the X-Men. They were fighting oppression. They're not about Zoomers. And good God almighty. You know, let's move on before I lose it. Now the black chick isn't throwing cards. She's throwing bobby pins. What? Children of the Atom has five new characters at the heart of it that Vita very meticulously wrote out entire backstories and histories and families and anything you want to know about these characters, Vita has uh, thought about it already. Oh, wow. 
you mean to tell me superhero characters that have backstories? Well, holy <laughs> shit. You know what? Stan Lee and Ditko were hacks. Peter Parker, Spider-Man. Oh my God. Like they're literally celebrating the, the golden rule of making a superhero at this point. We did what's already been done. <laughs> we're so creative. One of them has a TikTok. One of them has a fitness Insta. No. What the fuck? Like for real. One of them has a TikTok. So in between trying to be a superhero, which is already supposed to be cool as hell, that means you're actually doing something interesting. In your downtime, you're TikToking. And another one has a fitness Instagram. To what? Be a social media influencer? So basically, you're telling me that these people in the X-Men are like doing you know, the superhero thing until their social media presence pops off. Then they're going to be like, I'm sorry, guys, I can't do it anymore. I'm too big. I'm going to be doing a video of Linus Tech Tips. It's going to be me in Unbox Therapy doing push-ups. The people they hire to write for Marvel now, man, I swear to God. It's like they just have no creativity in their bones. They're literally as soulless as corporate entities in the gaming industry. I'm telling you, man. It's like whenever like these gaming companies, thank God E3 got canceled. I mean, it sucks that we're not going to have 2020 E3 cringe. But on the plus side, we're not going to have 2020 E3 cringe videos. Because now you don't have to worry about Jesse Williams popping up. What up, guys? Thank you for having me, EA. If you guys don't know who I am, my name is Jesse Wellens, and I am a YouTube creator. So I am here to talk about Need for Speed um, Payback. Uh, if you guys didn't know Need for Speed Payback, I'm, um, I got my boy Marcus, executive producer here. He is the producer of the game. Thank you, Nick, for having me. But frankly, these companies look at what's going on because they're so out of touch and they're like, uh, what's popular? What's, what's hip with people? Oh, uh, there's a very popular TikToker. Can we get them to do presentations? Oh, can we get OK Boomer for E3 2021? OK Boomer girl, she'll like come out and do a little dance and then we'll show the PlayStation 4 off. And we'll, we'll introduce a new game. That's kind of like the thought process these pop people have. What's popular with kids? Oh, TikTok. Do you honest to God think someone who spends their time trying to be a social media influencer on TikTok or working out on Instagram gives a rat's ass about the world around them. Like for real. Holy Jesus. Have you not seen OK Boomer Girls TikTok? Do you really think that that girl would be like the perfect candidate to be a superhero? Say a cup noodle myself, but Jeff Bezos is out there eating a thousand dollar steak in his trillion dollar mansion. And then what, what, what are you doing? What are, what are we doing? We're here on on my stream, eating a cup noodle. All right, we got it. We got it exactly. We got to eat the rich exactly. The answer is no. Basically, Vine gave us Jake Paul and Logan Paul and Lily Pons. It's the equivalent of telling me you made superheroes based on those douchebags. Fitness Insta. One of them uh, is basically the moderator for the mutant subreddit. <laughs> one of them is a cosplayer uh, and- This is retarded. A superhero that cosplays. Get the Wah. fuck out of here. These people must have failed English class. Oh my God. You ever heard of creative writing? A hero that in between dressing up to fight crimes, I'm guessing, Finds time to dress up for fun. Dude, that would be like me doing YouTube videos. Only to get off YouTube to do another video format for fun. Once I'm done with this, I don't want to look at it. How do these people get jobs? How do you look at X-Men? You see something like Wolverine. The dude was kidnapped, had his memory wiped. They turned him into a living weapon. He somehow escapes, get help from Alpha Flight. Starts rebuilding his life. He's found by Charles Xavier. He goes from a killing machine to like leading the school for the gifted. That is a story arc, dude. That's someone that overcame shit. You're telling me I now have to look at people who like to do the floss on TikTok. And the other one makes mutant music for so long. 
Dude, what's mutant music? What is mutant music? That sounds stupid. Just, it's not as dumb as like internet gas turning an Asian kid into like a 4chan a superhero, but if you don't know I'm drinking in between this. Mutant music. What, does the person like put their mutant powers into the music or something? Mutant music. If, if everybody has ears, they can technically enjoy the mutant music. So wouldn't it just be music? It's like the, the larger media in the X-Men universe is like, mutants are bad and like the X-Men are evil because- Fuck, Stanley's dead and look at what Marvel's becoming. It's like they waited till Stan was in the dirt and then they just made it worse than before. This is why the comic industry is dying. Stop diversity hires. Stop it. Just stop. Hire someone on merit. For God's sakes, hire someone who at least can have a coherent thought in the realm. It's like they are so devoid of ideas. They're like picking stuff out of the world we live in now. Uh, uh, social justice, feminism, TikTok, YouTube, Sonic the Hitchhawk. Oh wait, we don't own the rights. Get rid of that one. They're mutants and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, what would Zoomers think of that? They wouldn't, they would be like, no, they're great. <laughs> like How the X-Men react to these new characters who are their sidekicks is, the X-Men don't need sidekicks. The School for the Gifted is for mutants. On top of that, why would si why would the X-Men literally recreate versions of themselves? That makes no sense. It would be like Batman if he made Batboy and Robin had Robin Lad. You know, like, come on, dude. It's stupid. It's like they don't even understand the lore themselves. And they're there. I'm going to get a sidekick who has all the same... How do these people get the same powers? Each mutant is different. Explain that to me. Like, yes, they could be... Move on, dude. Move on. You lose your mind. Well, was, telekinesis is, like, something that can happen with a couple mutants. But, like, each one is still varied and different with their skill and ability. You can't literally have mutants that have all the same exact powers. A major part of the story that is going to have all sorts of ripples through their titles and ours. But also, you know, it's an X-Men comic. There's going to be powers, and there's going to be punching, and there's going to be bad guys, and all that kind of stuff. I'm very excited to have Vita Ayala and Bernard Chang as part of this title. Bernard really, really brought the thunder on this. It's really incredibly dynamic. Because he not only had to design these superhero identities, but also these civilian identities, and like people's moms, and like their little brother, and he's making these characters. It's like I, I'm looking at the art, and I'm like, it's okay. It's nothing amazing, though. It's real and whole in a way that a lot of artists probably couldn't. X-Men was some of my first comics ever, and to be able to... So pretty much the same thing that's happened in comics forever. Oh, he had to design these people and their moms and their little brothers like every other superhero that's ever existed throughout all of superhero dumb and comics. They'd be like going, he had to draw the characters first with a pencil and then ink them. It was really revolutionary. Play in that universe and also to add to that universe is, is really a dream come true. So if you've never read an X-Men book before and you're only familiar with them in other mediums, this is a great place to start off. It's almost like the kids are our perspective. You didn't add to the universe. You literally took characters that already existed and you gender swapped them or race swapped them and then said, they're sidekicks. This is like child level ideas. This is something you think up when you're in grade school. Th really? This is what... How could you come to Marvel and see giants like Stan Lee, Todd McFarlane, Ditko, Jack Kirby, Jim Lee? Did I say Jim Lee? Because I thought he was amazing. But, you know, you, you come in there, you see these guys, like, when you really think of, like, the guys at the top, like, really. And they pretty much built the entire foundation of Marvel. A handful of men came up with all these great characters. And you're telling me you couldn't shit out one new idea. <laughs> one! Just one! Oh my god. The fact that there's like no shame. Nobody here is sitting there going, wow, we really, we've just put another nail in the coffin that is Marvel Comics. Pretty soon, it's like the, the thing going on with the epidemic is going to help kill the comic book industry. But what really put it in the dire straits that it's been in for the past god knows how many years is these horrible ideas. So anything that you don't know, you're discovering it through these kids. I don't think we've seen this perspective in X-Men comics before. And I think people are going to super dig it. Uh, what they just said about if you've never read any X-Men comics, this is great. No, screw this. Screw these guys. Don't touch this with a 10-foot pole. Buy back issues of, like, Jim Lee's X-Men run if you want to get started. 
I mean, go, get, go anywhere but here. <laughs> anywhere but here. Even the house of M. You know, for God's sakes. Why in the name of would you bother with this? When you can literally get back issues. Of, let me see how much Jim, Re Jim Lee's run of X-Men is. Jim Lee's X-Men run. I'll buy like all those off eBay right now. Didn't Jim Lee, did Jim Lee come up with Omega Red? Who made that? Yep, Jim Lee did make Omega Red. Good lord. Like, Jim Lee and John Bryan, I believe. Like, Jesus Christ. And you just think of these creative dudes who were there before you. And you can't come up with nothing. Yeah, Jim Lee's Uncanny X-Men. Like, 30 bucks for a couple of these. Like, why would I bother with this when I could just get something classic? With amazing art. And already great stories with the original X-Men. There's even X-Force in the mix. Well, what do I want this for? How much you want to bet this is going to tank? Like, for real. She thinks people are going to super dig it. 20k dislikes, 1.5k likes. No. Already, this is a clear sign. Nobody wants this. Jesus. Mary and Joseph. 